Hi guys, I'm Polina. I'm combat medic uh, in volunteer uh, battalion here in Ukraine. And I want to explain you a difference between different types of car that we use for a medical evacuation and how it works in total. We are sitting now in our case work vehicle. It's L200 Mitsubishi. It's the most popular car in Ukraine for case work uh, evacuations from a front line to medevac. Uh, we will talk now uh, more in more detail about this car. Uh, it's our trunk where we drive in with our casualties. We have two places for paramedics here and uh, a place for one lane casualty. Uh, also, if we have a few sitting casualties, we can put them here and a few paramedics sitting here and helping them uh, with care. We have a place for lying casualty here and we have a pocket with all medicines that we need for a cure. Uh, and we can look now uh, closer to these uh, pockets that we have. In our work, we are working with protocol March, in which M stands for massive bleedings, A stands for airways, R stands for aspiration, uh, C for circulation, and H for hypothermia. And we have uh, here all pockets um, symbolize uh, each of these uh, letters. One of the most important stuff in our medicine equipment is tourniquets. We use tourniquet for uh, stop bleeding in our limbs. Uh, it closes the big arteries um, if you have some uh, holes in it. Um, how it works? We put in our hand, for example. Roll a stick. Close it. And here we have a stripe for tie. A lot of soldiers in a war die from a massive bleeding. So applying tourniquets is a priority knowledge for soldiers. Another stuff to stop bleeding is hemostatic gauze. Uh, we use it if you have a hole. For example, I have a hole here and I put the gauze inside and it stops bleeding. And then we use the bandages to cover uh, injury and it also makes um, additional pressure uh, to a wound. This is the stuff that we applied for airways. It's nasopharyngeal tube. We put it in the nose and uh, uh, this allows us to open airways. The easiest thing. If the previous stage didn't work, uh, the next one is uh, these two devices uh, that we put in your mouth to open airways. It's a little bit more complicated, uh, but it has better access uh, to airways and helps you breathe better. If the person is not breathing properly, we have another device. Uh, we apply to his mouth and nose and squeeze the bag. Uh, with squeezing this air bag, we can compensate the lack of air in his lungs and help casualty to breathe better. After airways, the next one is R, which stands for respiration. In this part, we are looking for holes in your uh, chest. If you find hole in the chest, you should apply chest seal to a wound, not to allow air to get inside the body. There are other stuff uh, that we use for, to provide first aid uh, care to a wounded person. For example, here we have burn shield and gidrogel for burns. Here we have some splits for fractures. So we have here abdominal and junctional tourniquets that help us to stop bleeding in complicated parts of the body. Uh, here we have a pelvic sling uh, for pelvic uh, fractures. Uh, also, we have a bone catheter uh, that help us to make injections and uh, put medications uh, through your bone. Also, there are some injections. Uh, for example, uh, tranex acid is the most popular to stop bleeding. Um, there are some liquids that help us to uh, refill uh, blood loose. Also, we have stretchers. It's plastic, it's very comfortable. 
Uh, if you have some wounded person on a battlefield, we can go with this and take him uh, to the car. So we also always take it with us on evacuations. If we can't reach a uh, casualty with a car, we go in by foot. And for this reason, we have a small backpacks. Uh, here we have everything that we need, the same in, as in the car, but it's uh, in smaller amount. And we have some tourniquets and bandages here, some air raid providers. Also, we have some splints, uh, different uh, burn heads. And uh, it's very comfortable because we can take some small pockets and use it in uh, some district area. So each paramedic has their own bag. It can be like this or it can be uh, a pocket on your pelvic. The main thing is that it needs to be comfortable uh, and uh, um, have everything that you need. So this is another car. We talked earlier about Kesevac and here is a Medevac. Is this car taking a casualty from a Kesevac to Medevac and bringing it to the hospital? This car is more bigger, it has more supplies. And usually in this car, a medic with education is sitting and working. And now we can look closer what we have inside. So we have the same pockets as we have in Kesevac, but we have a little bit much stuff here. We have place for a medic here or for light casualty. Also here we have a stretcher. It also moved uh, so we can take casualty from uh, other car and uh, give it to hospital when we need to transport it without uh, any disturb. So we have a monitor here. We can measure uh, blood pressure, pulse, uh, oxygenation. Uh, we have also pockets here. Uh, we have some splints for broken arms or legs. We have uh, burn um, covers and other different stuff for different uh, purposes. So we have casualty here. If we have two paramedics or one medic and one paramedic, we are working on different parts of body. So if, for example, I'm sitting here, I work on the legs, and the person who is sitting here works uh, on the upper side. Uh, we also have oxygen here, that we can put uh, a mask on a patient. So if our casualty have a problem with the upper body, we can sit here, so we can manage everything that we need for his breathing, for his upper body, chest, and uh, another um, injuries. Uh, also, we have here access to the driver, and we can communicate with driver better. Also, for example, if we have a few uh, light casualties and one hard casualty, we can put light casualties here and it will be comfortable for everyone. Thank you for watching this video. We explained how evacuation here in Ukraine works. We will really appreciate if you can support us by donation so we continue our job here on the front line in Ukraine.